Welcome back for part two of the guide file workflow. In part one, I took a large scan and turned it into a small guide file so that I could more easily make expressive adjustments to the photograph. Once I've completed making those adjustments, I'm ready to make large prints of this photograph. And to do that, I need to make a master file. The guide file workflow does this by transferring all the adjustment layers from the guide file onto the full size raw scan with a quick and easy process which creates a full size master file. I'll start the process by opening up both my raw scan and my layered guide file. Here you can see that on my guide file, I've added several layers to adjust contrast and density, dodge and burn, and adjust color and saturation. I'm going to turn these layers off so that you can see the background layer of this guide file looks exactly the same as the raw scan. The difference between the raw scan and the guide file is the size of the files and the adjustment layers on the guide file that make it look the way I want it to. But even though my guide file looks the way I want it to, it's only large enough at 25 megabytes to make 8x10 prints. On the other hand, my raw scan has 300 megabytes of data, great for making large prints, but it doesn't have the proper adjustment layers applied. So what I need to do is copy these adjustment layers from my guide file to my raw scan. Photoshop lets me copy layers from one file to another by dragging and dropping like this, but it's not a very efficient way to achieve our goal. Fortunately, there's an easier way, and it's at the very heart of the guide file workflow. If I resize the guide file so that it's the same size as the raw scan, I can quickly and easily transfer the layers to make a master file that matches my guide file. I do that by making the window for the guide file active by clicking on it like this. Then I go to the image menu and choose image size. With the image size dialog open, I need to enter the exact size of the raw scan in pixels so that I can size the guide file to the same size as the raw scan. Photoshop will do this for me if I go to the window menu and choose the raw scan. Once I do that, the dialog box is showing me that I'm going to upsample the guide file to 300 megabytes. In other words, the same size as the raw scan. That's what I want to do, so I'll click OK. As Photoshop sizes up my guide file, it sizes up all the layers and all the masks on this guide file to the same size as the raw scan. But upsampling the guide file also causes the photo to be very blurry, as you can see here when I zoom in to 100% magnification. That's because we've interpolated it from 25 megabytes up to 300 megabytes. We'll fix that by replacing this interpolated layer with the uninterpolated layer from the raw scan. I do that by copying the layers from one file to another, but instead of copying all these adjustment layers from the guide file to the raw scan, what I'm going to do is copy the raw scan into the guide file like this. I'll make the raw scan window active and go to the layers menu. Then I'll click and drag the background layer over to the guide file like this, and I'm going to press and hold the shift key while I'm doing that. Then I'm going to let go of the mouse button then let go of the shift key. The reason for holding down the shift key is it told Photoshop to copy this layer in alignment with all the other layers, which is essential for this process to work. Over here on the layer menu, you'll see that the raw scan has just been copied into the guide file and has been named layer one. Now to make this photograph look right, meaning all the expressive adjustments are applied, I need to move the high resolution data of layer one below all the adjustment layers, which I do by clicking and dragging it in the layer menu so that it is just above the background layer. Now the photo looks like it's supposed to again, and we're close to completing our master file, but we need to check our work. My first check is to turn layer one on and off and see if there is any difference between layer one and the background layer. They should be exactly the same if I followed the rules and done everything right. Occasionally, I will see a very small difference that's caused by the way Photoshop displays large images on screen. If that happens, I don't worry until I've done my second check, as that check will confirm absolutely if I've done things correctly. I do the second check by zooming into 100%, also known as actual pixels, and turning layer 1 on and off. 
When I turn it off, I see the interpolated pixel data from the guide file. It has the right color, but not the right resolution. When I turn it back on, I see that the color remains the same, but I get all the pixel data of the raw scan. I'm almost done, but I have a few more steps to complete before I have my master file. I'm going to zoom back out, and in the layers palette here, I have layer 1, which is the high-res data I want, and I have the background layer, which is that fuzzy, blurry, interpolated data that is now useless. So I'm going to get rid of it by dragging it to the trash, because this layer is taking up 300 megabytes of space with no benefit whatsoever. With that done, it's time to save the file. I'm going to choose Save As and name it Master, since it has the full resolution of my RAW scan along with all the color adjustments I want, and I want this to be the source file for all future uses of this photograph. That's what Master means to me. Once it's saved, I'm ready to use it for making targeted files for specific uses, like a 16x20 print, a magazine cover, or whatever else I want. Now you've seen everything you need to know to use the guide file workflow to make working on large files easier. But before we go, I want to show you the files that I'll keep on my hard drive for this specific photograph. Here's my folder for this photograph. In it, I have the raw scan, and I'm going to keep this because it lets me start over from the beginning if I ever change my mind at some point in the future. Next, I have the guide file. I'm going to keep this too because if I ever want to make a new interpretation, I can use this as my starting point. And last, I have the master file. This is the file I'm going to use as the source for all my targeted files. Targeted files are used to make prints and any other uses that come up for this photograph. Until next time, I'm Rich Sealing. Thanks for watching.